the dreadful need for, for housing and other social projects at the, at the end of the war. That should have been a great opportunity for architects. Uh, was it taken? Well, that's when I was an architectural student, and that's why we thought everything was going to be new and wonderful. And the masses of modern movement were going finally to be able to build the cities that we had been reading about. It was a great, it was a great moment of optimism. What went wrong? No, what went right first? What went right? Well, I think the new towns were a, a very good experiment. And I think they're still there. Not all of them equally successful. Um, what then went wrong was because Milton Keynes, in a way, which was a, a new town based on suburban, on on the idea of suburbia, not on the idea of the Garden City. The Athens Charter um, actually classified architecture by function, didn't it? That was primarily primarily what it was about. Was that? the sort of thinking that led to the zoning within our cities and ultimately to the death of cities? Well, it's, it has to be held responsible for some of that. Uh, I think the idea of zoning out uh, functions in a city is death of the city as we know it. New urbanism was, I suppose, another response to the death of cities, wasn't it? That yes. Was its, that was its aim. Yes. Well, I've just been sent a vast celebratory uh, volume about Seaside, which is, in a way, the first one. Uh, it's an upper-middle-class enclave with a favela outside it, rather like Brasilia in that sense. Because, like all those kind of uh, high-class developments, it has to have a service outpost um, or even out area which is bigger than itself. It's almost zoning by class, isn't it? Yes. Why do you think Prince Charles is so keen on it? Well, it's not for me to comment on no, that. No, please do. <laughs> Well, he thinks he can do it the um, the Garden City way. And I wish it well, but I don't think it's worked out that way. Is it, is it that it's too optimistic of you? Of I think it's much too optimistic. There has been a, a change in the way that people engage, or shall we say, take power in cities. Um, they think that they can change things. Um, but what we tend to get is community action becomes nimbyism, in fact. Yes. It, was, it worked very well in New York when Jane Jacobs took over the opposition to uh, Robert Moses. Robert Moses is going to arrive, as you know, the motorway through Washington Square. And they stopped it. It was a small-scale action. It was very successful. It energized the neighborhood. I lived there for a while and knew it, I know it quite well. Uh, it was a very successful action. But it doesn't seem to bear repetition. And you need a Jane Jacobs to energize local populations to do that. It sort of and worked here with, um, with Covent Garden, didn't it? It worked in Covent Garden. And that was architect-led? That was architect-led. Was, was, was it because the criticism of, of NIMBYism is that it's against things, it's not for things. Yes. Do, do you see a positive aspect to it? Can it be positive? Of course it can be positive. It should be positive. I think we all need to read it ever these are hard. What, what can people do? What's going to move people to demand better? I think it will need, need something that will unsettle people sufficiently to demand a change. And what that will be, I, I simply can't tell. I mean, whether there's going to be a series of power failures, which is, after all, what we're being threatened with constantly, uh, or whether it will be a 
climatic disaster or whether something else will happen. But I think it probably will need something that will force people to think again about what we're doing to the environment. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the warnings come thick and fast. I'm minded of the, the story you told of um, Constantine in founding his uh, eponymous city. We have the rules, that we have the way forward, but we can still break away from it. We don't have to follow. Well, Constantine was being the new Romulus, and he was ploughing the edge of Constantinople, according to the ancient pagan rite. And at a certain point, he deviated from the preordained route and claimed to be guided by an angel. So we need an angel? We need an angel. 